We're back, baby. It's the Daily Stripe, February 22nd, Wednesday, 2023. Lamar Jackson is the hot topic, as are the other quarterbacks. Uh, Derek Carr visited the Jets. They said if he won in New York, he'd be a Hall of Famer. Before we get into Lamar, I want to hear your quick, quick takes on that. If Derek Carr wins a Super Bowl for the New York Jets, is he a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it means that much to the Jets. When's the last time the Jets won the Super Bowl? Joe Namath. Exactly. So, is he a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Okay. Better is stats. That, transitive I mean, property works. Mean, already, already better stats than Joe Namath, too. That's, that he's, is true. He's just... He's not going to win. Okay. With the Jets. I don't think with this roster, it's out of question. It's more the rest of the AFC to me. Sure. Who he's got to get through. Yeah, but I, I think there's still an, an element of any given Sunday where if the rest of the roster, if like the Jets defense continues to be built, and Robert Sala continues to progress as a head coach, Brees Hall comes back, their offensive line comes back healthy, they, Garrett Wilson's proven he's a number one. If the right quarterback's in there, they're a team that can really contend. Uh, I think that we were – Buffalo was a bit uninspiring in the playoffs, and Miami had some issues in the health department, and the Patriots, quite frankly, aren't the Patriots of old, and we know that. So. I just think it's funny that Derek Carr is like their, their champion. Like, like that's, their messiah. That's, that's the one that <laughs> yeah. like they're putting all their eggs in the basket. It's a major what if, but it, if he is there – I mean, it's a massive upgrade from what they've had in the last eight years. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's – It's all contextual, right? Like – yeah, for you're, sure. You're talking about like comparing him to 38 year old Joe Flacco and Mike Zach White. Wilson and Mike White, and before that Sam Darnold. Yeah. So like, yeah, Derek Carr was the staple of consistency for the Raiders for a long time. I mean, if I were the Jets, obviously I, you'd want someone who is a young gun, like you know, a Burrow or Herbert, one of those guys, you know, Josh Allen, someone who has got a a lot of career left, and also you can get on a rookie deal. But mm -hmm. they missed that opportunity when they drafted Wilson. So yeah. that was their opportunity to get that guy. So I guess now you got to look to the free agency pool because you're not going to get that good of a draft pick if you're going to continue to be a contending team and vie for a playoff spot. You can't you're not going to be able to get your guy at pick number 20 or 18. No, you can't. You also are in a position where you just spent a high pick on a quarterback. And it's like you have the first overall pick and your team was that bad, like a Kyler Murray, Josh Rosen situation. Where you go, okay, we were the worst team in the league. We could go get Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, pick your poison. Um, saw someone mock him first of all, first overall today. Uh, so Derek Carr is probably your best bet when you look at health with Jimmy Garoppolo um, and the cost and on and off the field of Aaron Rodgers. Quick question. I don't think yeah. I've ever asked anyone this, but do you think that – would you rather have the draft be first or free agency come first? Because as it stands, free agency comes first. I because would, I think that's, there's a lot, just there's a lot of decision making that has to go into who you're drafting or who you're signing because you're filling needs, you're filling position holes. So like if you're a team who's looking for a quarterback, you're thinking to yourself, well, can we sit a little bit and get our guy, or do we have to go out in free agency to get our guy? Which you, would you prefer? I I'm indifferent. I think I like free agency first. It protects the players who are currently playing a bit more because like all right, I can just go fill this in the draft. I don't need to sign this guy. Um, I also think it's a bit more exciting to, for the draft purposes, Hey, like, so like getting into Lamar Jackson, if he signs the exclusive franchise tag, which puts him, they don't have the number yet, probably North of $45 million this year for a season, uh, which <laughs> is kind of crazy. It gives the Ravens exclusive rights to operate for him or operate with him. They can either sign him to a long-term deal, not sign him to a long-term deal and let him play on the tag or trade him for whatever, you know, they agree to with the other team. Now, if he signs the non-exclusive, it's for $14 million or $13 million, less than a 30 to one to $32 million range um, for the season. Now, a team and Lamar Jackson can negotiate without the Baltimore Ravens being involved. If they agree to terms and Baltimore doesn't want to match the offer sheet, then all Baltimore, all Baltimore gets back is two first-round picks. <laughs> so uh, I think the Baltimore's in a really good position either way. I, to me, I think Baltimore is in an extremely good position either way. I also think that um, the – I think it's unfortunate for Lamar Jackson was discussing this earlier and we'll kind of segue into the whole point with him. I don't – when he is on the field, he's an incredible talent, an MVP caliber player. The issue is, is he missed four games last year. They missed the playoffs. He missed five games this year. They made the playoffs. He didn't play in that playoff game. And people are saying, oh, it was to protect – 
you know, his contract to protect his future. If Lamar Jackson, who is an ultimate competitor, which we know him to be, was capable of playing that game, he would have played the game. I agree. It was too hard to play the game. I agree. And also, I think that he lost stock by missing those games. Each game he misses, you're thinking to yourself, how bad is the injury, right? So you want your quarterback of the future to be as healthy as possible. So if you want to go out there and prove that you're healthy, you go play. Mm -hmm. They've, the rest of the roster is, in my opinion, strong. The Rashad Bateman pick, unfortunately, hasn't panned out. The Hollywood Brown pick didn't pan out. They're not out. good drafters. They're not great drafters at the receiver position. Outside of that, I think they do a good job. I think the, the Ravens do a good – They look, the Kyle Hamilton pick was a good pick last yeah. year. The Linder Brown pick was a good pick last year. Year in and year out, they get good guys in the building. And they replenish their team. It's Patrick it's, Queen, that was a good pick. Good pick. It's very sure. – the manipulation. They go on of, the defense. <clears throat> they have a good defense. The, manipula the manipulation of draft picks to go get Roquan Smith – I think they are a well-run organization. It's very rare that we're looking at the Baltimore Ravens, even with injuries, and they we're like, all right, this team is completely out of contention. They are always in the mix for something. I do think it's an unfortunate situation that they didn't put the greatest team around Lamar Jackson, or the greatest offense around Lamar Jackson, and he plays a style of football where he's more prone to injuries. You could tone him back and change his style of football, but that takes away of what Lamar Jackson really is. Mm -hmm. And hanging your hat on a guy potentially being healthy and potentially you know, changing his style of play and giving him $200 million, yeah, the big contracts work from Mahomes, but go to Rodgers, go to Kyler Murray, go to Russell Wilson, go to Deshaun Watson so far. All, so far, all four of those contracts have been massive flops. So I, I, I always err on the side of caution with big deals. And I know it's the way the game is played and there's just nothing you can do about it. We go to baseball, we dealt with that all off season where these guys are getting 10 year deals and we know they're 14. not for, they know, we know they're not going to work. Well, there's not a scenario here where he doesn't get a lot of money. In exactly. So I, just, I don't like, there's no, like you can say a big deal doesn't work, but Lamar Jackson is a big deal player. He's going to get a big deal. If I'm the Baltimore Ravens, I just, my overarching point, I don't think it's egregious if they balk at giving him a big deal and take the draft picks. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind, honestly. And they get the draft picks from just their compensation picks, or they get them from the team who signs them? I would... My gut check is... If I'm the Ravens, I wouldn't leave it up to chance and give them the non-exclusive. I'd rather eat that extra $14 million if he comes and plays. Just for a year, too. Just for a year. And, you know, have Lamar Jackson a, as, either as my quarterback or the ability to trade him to whoever I want, knowing that they'll probably sign him to a long-term deal. And I'm, again, like, you know, we discussed You could probably this. get a pick from a first-round pick from them, too. Oh, you will. That's the whole thing. Yeah. You're going to get – and you, you could even get multiple first-round picks, which you would get from the non-exclusive tag, and another second, a fourth. Like, you could really – I'm not saying you're going to get a Deshaun Watson type haul, Russell Wilson type haul, because I think teams are a bit scared of that now. But you could get something a little short of that. Um, and I think, you know, we spoke about it last week, and Nick, you, you threw it out there. I know we mentioned Derek Carr to the Jets, but you threw out that Derek Carr to the NFC South was – so yeah, Lamar well, Jackson's got to be in the same boat. Why? That's what I was been saying since this whole contract thing came up, and since he's you know, there's been uncertainty if he's going to return. Is go to the South if you're, you'll be the best quarterback in the South right now, <laughs> and you basically can have your pick of whatever team you want to that you think is the most competitive. That's the most enticing offer, best roster for you, and go ahead and win the South and sneak your way into the playoffs and see if you can contend with those NFC teams. Because look, the Bucks. I think that they are a quarterback away from being right there again. You know, the Saints, same. Panthers, good defense. We, they were had a great resurgence at the, end of the, at the end of the season. Another team. You know, I mean, I think Falcons may be the only team that I think still need improvements all over the place. But I actually – Go run the South. You're from the South, too. Like, from Florida. Like, I think it's just more important to, like, go to the NFC. <laughs> Forget the yeah. forget the division. Like that's what I, my point about the Jets is. Like, look at the conference, and I get that. Like, if Derek Carr slots into the Jets, okay, maybe they become the best team in that division besides the Bills. And now, but the Bills are still there. Josh Allen still exists. Patrick Mahomes still exists. Like Herbert, Joe, Burrow. Joey Burrow exists in the AFC North to face Lamar Jackson or Lamar Jackson list Ravens. So if you're the Ravens and you don't have Lamar Jackson, great. You have first two first round picks. Who's your quarterback? I, I Do you want to win the division? Are you a competitive franchise whose fan base demands that they compete to win the division every single year? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if you're go based off everything both of y'all just said, if I'm the Ravens, I can't sink, I can't sink two hundred plus million dollars into a guy that's missed meaningful games. 
back to back years. But who's your alternative? That's my question. Your alternative is something for cheaper. And then you go and you take the draft capital you get from trading him and you continue to build your roster and build your defense. That's how I feel. I, I would, and then I would go get a quarterback because with or without Lamar, are they better than the Bengals? No. Are they better than the Chiefs? No. Are they better than the Chargers? I don't think so. Are they better than the Bills? I don't think so. So right now, off the top of my head, they're the fifth best team. They in, might in, have been well, better than the Jags. With the, maybe not better than the Jags. With maybe the, not better than the Dolphins. Like, with the healthy – okay. If Lamar is healthy, are you guaranteeing that they're not better than the Bengals? At full health, they have a shot. But again, That's what like, I'm saying. So as long as you have a shot, as long as you believe that you have a shot, because that's what it's all about. Like, forget whether or not we think they're going to do it or, or we think they aren't going to do it. Like, the reality of the situation only matters once the events have occurred. Mm. And if he gives you the best shot and you believe that with him at the helm, under center or in the shotgun, can actually win you that division and get you to the playoffs and get you a Super Bowl, the alternatives, like, you can name me any, any variation of them. You could say that, like, oh, we're, we're mortgaging him now for the future. But that's that could be three years down until they get their next quarterback who actually can can win them a Super Bowl. I I can't disagree with you. I can't. You don't have push. time. You don't have time to play around. But you also don't have time. It's the NFL. And, but it's the but you also it's a money situation because you could become it could become a situation like the Cardinals, where I'm not saying he's going to have a season ending injury, but he's had back to back big injury seasons. Kyler Murray now is going to miss probably well, this whole also, year, and you have there's also an element of trust there. in Kyler Murray that I feel like generally speaking, people have in Lamar Jackson because he's a little bit older. MVP. He's got an MVP. He's... I love Lamar. I think he's amazing. I think he's an unworldly talent. But it's not like he lit the world on fire passing back-to-back years. Like, his biggest... The biggest thing he has is his his elusiveness and his ability to move the ball with his legs. It's just his best trait. We've also talked about the lack of receivers, though, in this show, too. It's true. So, I mean, besides Mark Andrews, like... The weapons have not been great. But they didn't, so what they are you didn't gonna necessarily do like you go build in the their draft? offense to be a deep threat team. Like It's not like they went and got T. Hollywood Higgins Brown and Chase. was supposed to be that guy. And they, they, like you said, they flopped. They flopped on both picks to go. Both first round wide So receivers. like if you're like, I'm, we're talking about. Well, it's not like they were the only team that liked Hollywood Brown. He was, he was no, well liked by sure, a lot of teams. Sure, I, so was Bateman. But both didn't work out. And if you're the Baltimore Ravens, can you conceivably make a third selection in what the last five years on a wide receiver? Like you can't keep doing that. Like it's just too much draft capital to, in the first round. I know it's just the it's, you know guys could pop out from anywhere, but too much draft capital to sink in into the wide receiver position, in my opinion, for the first round. We make a trade. Make a trade. Established hey. guy. You know Pittman. I know we've talked about it in the past. I don't think he's going anywhere, but Justin Jefferson, like. Yeah. DeAndre Hopkins, you Devontae can't get Adams. A, a four, I mean, look, Devontae Adams is a guy I think that the Ravens, if the Ravens keep Lamar, they got to go get a guy like Devontae Adams or, or DeAndre Hopkins. But if not, then you got to exclusive tag him and then you got to move him to the Bucks because of those teams you listed. Saints, I think it's a bit wishful thinking for our, our dear, dear sweet Brit that the Saints are good. No, they were not. They have a good defense. Their team is good. They're, they're good. They're for the bat. They're good of the bad. They're the bo- top of they're the bottom. They're not the lowest tier in the NFL. They're probably like no. the second lowest. They're top of the bottom, I would say. Top. Of I the mean, they're playing side. the NFCs, so they have a shot. They have a shot in the NFC South. I think the Thurs have a shot. I don't. Th- I think the Falcons. We've been like saying, and a lot of people have loved the fit and like the Vic and all of that. I don't think it'd behoove the Falcons. The more I think about it, the more we discuss it. I think they're a little bit farther farther away from making a move like that. But right. to me, the Buccaneers it makes perfect sense. They're right back in it. Right. Right back in it. Man, it's just hard to say from a Ravens perspective, like walking away from a, a top seven QB in the league. What's you know the biggest how, domino here in all the quarterback carousel discussions? Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, honestly, I think people are going to see what Carr does. I really do. So if Carr goes to the South, mm-hmm. let's say Carr goes to the Bucks. Does that prompt the Panthers and the Saints to try to go after Lamar? To really push, put the foot in the gas and right. go get Lamar Jackson to think to try to be competitive. Is, we're certain that Rodgers is staying in Green Bay now. No. So I mean, there's another opportunity to I think see he, someone in the South, maybe even the AFC South, Tennessee. I, I think I think he's gone. I think he's a guy that's going to be on the move. Jimmy G. He'll be on the. I just. <sighs> I mean, look, if you're like a organization that's trying to like really 
take control of your division. I don't think Jimmy G is your guy, but because I can't be like, oh, go get Jimmy G because my biggest knock on the Mars injuries and Jimmy G is the same same right. issue. And I just exciting. don't know. Yeah, if if A Rod isn't going to the NFC South, like, what? Why is he moving? Right. I know, like, we all like the Lions, and, like, they're kind of a... You had them as your sneaky dark horse contender, and obviously the Vikings won that division this season, but I still feel like they have a true path if he's playing, you know, but they got from move. two years ago as opposed to this past year. And they got to move Jordan Love, but yeah, sure. I We've seen that guy play, like, f- five games. And that was a bad pick. Everybody's, like thinking that he's going to be good. Like, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm not saying he's not. It's just I don't know if he's going to be good. I Mid. Yeah. Mid. Well, now we're back. Un- incomplete. Now we're back on the, the conversation that maybe Aaron Rodgers is staying in Green Bay, but two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were like, oh, Jordan loves their QB of the future. <laughs> They're going to move on from Aaron Rodgers. So it's like we had kind of said that this guy was going to be a starting quarterback next season. To go back to your question, to kind of like... Carr's the instigator. Because if he goes to the Jets... But he's not the most important. Piece. No, not the most important piece. But I think if he's the, I think he's the catalyst. Because if Carr goes to the Jets, I think Roger. I don't think Ro, the, the Titans' smoke is smoke. I know I I continuously say when there's smoke, there's fire. This is the one instance that I'm like, you can't go to the Titans. Why not? Because you're not winning. Because I'm with you. I think the Jags are good. Yeah, but do you don't think that if. Aaron Rodgers goes to the Titans. They are neck and neck with the Jags, or maybe even at what better. Price? At what? At what? Christopher Price? Are the Jag? You know, like at, seriously. I don't know. I, I to me, I think he stays. If 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 Carr goes to the Jets, I think Rodgers stays. So it's Jets or bust for Rodgers. I would think so. Okay, could be wrong. Now here's a question for you: Is Aaron Rodgers a Hall of Famer if he wins with the Jets? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, February twenty second, Wednesday, the Daily Stripe. We'll see you guys next time.